थैंक यू सो मच मनीष आवर को स्पॉन्सर्स आर ऑल्सो एस्टन इंटरनेशनल दे आर सम ब्रॉशर्स अवेलेबल यू कैन कलेक्ट दैम फ्रॉम दी दिस थिंग माई अपॉलोजीज टू द प्रेजिडेंट काउंसिल ऑफ आर्टिव आर्किटेक्चर फॉर रशिंग हिम अप अ लिटल बिट uh we have we are working to a slightly delayed schedule and i'm sure most of you don't want to be too late while getting back home uh my next our next topic for the evening the panel discussion for this evening is the changing role of professional institutions uh as you are aware the profession of architecture is changing rapidly the growing indian market requires architectural expertise to meet the infrastructure needs to tap into this opportunity we architects need help of our professional institutions to help build relationships as well as explore new markets we know need support from our chapters governments professional institutions to meet the challenges offered by international firms we are also striving to level the playing field for our practices by pushing for smarter decisions like retaining indian architects preventing mixed companies from practicing architecture the unreasonable fees offered by both private and government agencies and fair and transparent appointment of architects more importantly bringing policies that allow new architectural firms to establish the practice by enabling them to partner with bigger firms who are engaged for larger public projects many such policy decisions could enhance our ability to compete and would reduce our vulnerability we would also be seeking government export uh, governmental support to strengthen and expand our market for global success and i hope the panel discussion would touch upon this subject and show us the direction to be adopted on this vibrant note i invite our esteemed panelists for this evening may i request architect bishwajendra nayak bishwajendra nayak president council of architecture to join us architect vijay garg vice president council of architecture architect amitabh roy executive committee member council of architecture architect balbir verma past president iia architect neeraj manchanda some of our panelists uh, have been introduced earlier this evening so i will not put you through the rigors of introducing them again I would like to introduce the panelists who were not introduced so far. Architect Balbir Verma is the former president of the Indian Institute of Architects. He is a graduate of the Chandigarh College of Architecture of the 1969 batch. He and his wife, architect Vinita Verma, have a firm of practicing architects in Delhi. In addition to have served as a member of UIA Council, zonal chairman of Arcasia, and also the chairman of the committees of professional practice of both Arcasia and the Commonwealth Association of Architects. he is also the chairman of the national advisory committee of the national of the earthquake engineering iit kanpur architect neeraj manchanda is the managing partner at nma a highly regarded and award winning architectural design practice based in new delhi as uh, one of india's leading architects neeraj has lectured in presented at various international and national form forums on subjects such as design for education and sustainability apart from designing in 14 indian states it has also operated in the sark countries and it has brought the sark into focus it's also the winner of uh, nat national architectural competition for iit in 2004 the architectural practice of the year award the design for education in 2012 and the national award to the indian institute of interior design in 2011 among several other commendations our moderator for the evening is architect shamit manjanda chairman of the ia northern chapter i now hand over the mic to him thank you thank you thank you anuj for introducing everybody to us changing role of professional institutions this is a topic uh, which has become of prime importance to us our practices are changing our 
education systems are changing, and so must our institutions. I was reading a, a statistic the other day. By 2050, 2050, 50% of India's inhabitants will live in cities, amounting to over 800 million people. That's a huge number. Architects are interested with creating the platform, the very stage on which the lives of all these peoples will unfold. We primarily have two bodies in India which influence the architectural profession. One is the Council of Architecture, which is a regulatory body. And we have the Indian Institute of Architects, which is our professional body. We are fortunate to have on this panel people who have served on both these bodies, Mr. Verma, Vijay, Naik Sab, and uh, we have Neeraj, who is a practicing architect. We have Amitabh Roy, who is uh, from the teaching and now also on the uh, COA. Uh, some of the important issues that we are facing today, I'm going to enumerate some of them. And I would like uh, this panel to deliberate on these or other things that they wish to take. Uh, we have the issue of GATS and entry of foreign architects in India. We have the issue of the structure of architectural firms. Should companies be allowed? Should there be LLP firms, partnerships, proprietorships? We also have a major issue, which is the amendment to the Architects Act, which has been under consideration for a very long time. We have the issue of engineers practicing as architects. On the education side, we have the following standards of architectural education and uh, the uncontrolled mushrooming of architectural schools all, all over India. Non-availability of faculty for these schools aspirations of the young graduates and the kind of salary structure that they are getting today. On the practice side, we have the methodology of how government awards architectural work through its PSUs. It, it, on the, uh, in the COA, we have a certain definition and the government itself flouts those recommendations. Uh, something that we have been discussing at the Northern Chapter also is the importance of good architectural design. Uh, we don't have a feel-good factor. Maybe we need to revive exhibitions like, uh, if you would remember, Vistara, which was part of the Festival of India in the uh, late 80s, that kind of a thing. Or, And I would like uh, the panelists today to discuss on how COA and IAA can work together to make it a better profession. I would uh, like to start with Mr. Verma, if he can share his views on this. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Shamit. First of all, I must thank the Northern Chapter for deciding to have a panel discussion on the issue of whether we call it changing or maybe I would say role of professional institutes. It keeps on changing. So we have to go with the change. To start with, it's not that I'm going to take a long time. It's only the initial comment which I would like to make. What we have seen in last few months, there have been a lot of changes at COA. I am not talking only about the elections which were held, because all these things are important. I am also talking about the response 
from amongst the profession in terms of wanting to come forward and work towards the processes and possibilities of this profession so that the profession can serve up to its best to the society. I know in his speech, President C.O.A. Nayak Ji have mentioned few things which were coming straight from the heart. We all know, as asked by him, that we have to all work together. Coming back to the role of professional institutes, I would say we should look at the status of profession today and also the, the role which the institutes, professional institutes need to play. I must refer to a recent, because just now Shamit mentioned that maybe we must have some more exhibitions to showcase the work of architects and all that. Yes, it is very important. Recently, there was a huge conference at exhibition in Mumbai, organized by Domus, on the status of profession. There, the keynote speaker, Dr. Bhanu Pratap Mehta, who is the present president of the Center for <coughs> Policy and Research of India, in his keynote address, while referring to various other issues about architecture, he observes that the growing disconnect between the manner in which the nature and aims of a profession are articulated by academics and the manner in which these are viewed by practitioners and the general public. To me, this connect between the academics, the profession and the people of this country, that means the clients. I don't consider the government to be the client, I don't consider the builder to be the client. I consider the architect must consider the people or the user of the built environment which is designed by the architects to be their clients. In the beginning, I would like to leave this discussion at this point only that how do we in times to come will make sure maybe I'm going to repeat because some of you who had come to this uh, auditorium little earlier the small film which was being shown where what was attributed to me or what I mentioned was that it is not that the architects should be asking why we are not being given this project, why we are not being asked to do this work. It is the people or the clients who should know whatever, whenever they think of any building or built environment, they know that they have to go to an architect. How do we, the professional institute, ensure that we should create a situation where we don't demand it is not by demand, but it is by demonstration by the profession that we are asked to be part and parcel of the changing times and the progressive India in times to come. Thank you for the time being, and I'll come back to you again. Thank you, Armaji. I think you uh, touched on, on a very important point that the public must be made aware and they should be demanding that most uh, that all projects must be designed by architects. I'd request uh, architect Vijay Gurg to share his views. Thank you, Shamit. 
foremost important thing which is um, uh, the required role for IIA and COA both to bring on table the discussion on design policy for India or design code because we are working on in engineering codes we are focusing on engineering methodology we have national building code which is focused on engineering design so I think what is foremost important is we should now this high time we look at the design code and design policy for India this was some time back thought by our policy makers in 2007-2008 but somehow it did not go through or did not proceed further. I think the IAA and COA should work together to bring in these important issues in terms of bringing focus on the design education and design code and which will in turn bring the focus on the architects and the designers and our cities will be more livable and much better. With the kind of activity and the focus shifting on the uh, urban and rural infrastructure these days and the kind of money we are spending as a country on rural and urban infrastructure. So these issues need to be addressed by the professional bodies like us and we need to seriously think where are we going because in today's dimension when we I started my practice I never thought of a project of a hundred crores or five hundred crores we used to think of only in terms of five crore ka project mil gaya, bahut badi ho gaya. but today we only hear of projects of hundred crore five hundred crore fifteen thousand crores hundred crores and where none of us qualify because the criteria and the way the projects are being awarded the policy for the design component in it is not being addressed the quantum of money being spent is being becoming the focus and the contractors way the way we appoint contractors are we are appointing the architects and we look at the whole project as a contracting and the executing on the lowest fees basis which again need to be looked into from the perspective what is the architect's fees and what is the architect's input and the design input which is lost somewhere in the focus we get people to work on this so I think this is high time that we should address these issues. They, we getting every day hundreds of complaints of against PSUs that they are inviting the non-architectural companies to bid for projects which are uh, supposed to be the architectural projects. But uh, and then we as an architect in the name of the foreign architect want to grab these projects and we take permission on one side our friends come to COA that sir this is being done wrong I will not name people but they are very very big people very uh, uh, established people in the profession and who actually doesn't need to cut corners but they are responsible for the state of affairs in the profession because they on one side they come to us say sir please write this letter do this talk to the government and we start the dialogue when we are about to reach something these people will go and bid for the project and take it on the lowest fee basis and the whole effort of these bodies will go in vain. So we need to see how do we tackle these kind of people or these kind of our fellow friends who are seniors who are supposed to be our mentors and guiding us and how do we deal with these kind of situations. I being in COA for last three months I have come to come across many issues which I thought are only are projected in wrong light when I was on the other side of the table. But when I come on the other side, I realize that many people who are violating are the people who are making the most no big, bigger noises. And the people who are sufferers are not actually speaking out their minds. And I think the professional bodies need to activate the professionals to speak up and demand their right. That is another thing. And the other thing which is putting us in the bad light, the quality of education we are imparting today. We have are focused of opening because what our, my president has spoken to you. We are very pained as Council of Architecture when we took over. Our president is the most pained and most disturbed man today after three months of the review 
we have reviewed 200 plus colleges in these two few months and we have to, to our surprise the most of the people who are expected to be of the high integrity are found to be of the very lowest integrity and besides that it is very disturbing to further note that the people who are supposed to run these institutions for the betterment of the profession and to bring in quality professionals because the, if you bring in bad quality professionals then the whole the, the other people on the other side who are non-professionals who are public or who are the government where these people are going they will tell you you don't know anything engineers know better or the other people know better why should you should be given this job because we have failed to prove the worth of the profession because number of professionals who are practic coming out today are not trained properly and don't even know the basics and if I have visited about 50-60 colleges not as COA but when I was in IIA as COA I have been only to two or three colleges so I only because whenever I talk I will talk of SPA because SPA is my mentor institution I been there I live there but if I compare anything with SPA even though SPA may not be the best of the examples to give but still half of the institution don't even have one teacher and we need to uh, and then when they come to COA they will beg sir we have these institutions we will need to run we allow us we will get faculty this I don't know how to deal with this situation and this is not the prime function of the COA we are only doing to monitor that nothing goes wrong it should be our joint responsibility and our and to my bigger surprise most of the architects sons and daughters and their relatives are studying in such institutions which are not non-existent so we need to actually be careful and we need to raise our voice unless we do it and if we are doing not performing as a COA we, you need to come and tell us we are not performing other thing which I would like to raise here is the regarding education in particular is the entry level qualifications which have been a long pending issue the Council of Architecture decided to introduce science based students will join architecture profession henceforth Council has recommended to the Government of India and I think it will very soon become a reality <laughs> and then NATA is the most problematic area which has been reported to us after joining NCOA and our president has discussed the matter with NIC and we uh, and the government of India and government of India in principle has agreed to conduct a national level test through COA and one or two premier institutions will join hands with COA to conduct a national level test replacing NATA next year onwards that is the principle in principle decision and then most important factor regarding the Amendment in Architects Act. Why we talk of the most important issue today is the Amendment in Architects Act is because if you read very carefully the practice of architecture is not only the domain of architects as per the Architects Act. We may have studied, we believe that we are the only person who can practice architecture but our act does not give us the right that we are the only people who can practice architecture. We are, our act only tells us we can use the word architect as a prefix to our name and we can believe that we are a big great people and we are architects but it does not give us the, the sole or the proprietary right to practice architecture anybody can practice architecture as per the act is a hard reality which need to change and for which council of architecture has constituted a committee and Mr. Verma was made the convener and we are expected to get his report within three next one or two months so that we can put it to public debate what kind of changes we want in the act and we have promised the government to bring in the draft proposal before the government in next six months am i right sir present sir so these are some important issues and besides this i would request indian institute of architect to draft out basic agreements policies which they think as an architects we should do and IIA and COA can jointly publish those documents for the benefit of the practice of the professional and the public and the government so that we know what are the kind of 
standard agreement because sometime back the, uh, when I studied architecture, we were given a booklet which was 25 rupees costing that time by the Indian Institute of Architect, which has standard format agreements. And times have changed. They need to be changed, but nobody has published, neither COA and IA made an effort in that direction. I think we should jointly work on to that domain and should take that responsibility to frame out rules for ourselves and code of practice and ethics, which we should adhere to. And if we don't, what should be the remedy? Because what I'm saying, the most of the problem exists in the profession because of our seniors who has not, who has only kept away most of us from performing in the right direction. They are teaching us something and doing something else. So that double standard need to go and we need to question that. With these words, I will leave the discussion here to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay, uh, for candidly admitting a lot of things uh, about our profession and uh, bringing to f this forum uh, some very important issues that are facing us. I now move to architect Neeraj Manchanda to share his thoughts. Well, things are pretty bad uh, by all accounts. And, um, you know, we have to find a way to get things back on track in some sense. So I think uh, for a start, uh, to just come to terms, uh, it's like a recursive realization that I have as an architect that, you know, well, it's, it's a pretty big deal to be um, in a position where one can afford to philosophize about how to order or to reorder the physical world. I mean, it's a, it's, this is a big thing. And it's a significant thing. So I'd like to start by saying that uh, the Institute um, uh, needs to reiterate very strongly uh, profession, the philosophical aspect of profession in a very central way internally so that um, it is possible for all architects, junior to be architects, practicing architects, to, to feel and to understand the dignity that this profession carries and the very large responsibility that this profession carries. I think that's really, to me, at the outset, something which is extremely significant. Often I find in discussions, in schools, in various fora, this particular aspect uh, about what planners and architects are as a community is either overlooked or underweighted or, you know, underpresented. Uh, I also feel very strongly that I think we as a community have abdicated the philosophical position in public discourse, in our own professional behavior, in many, many instances. We, we are faced with uh, a crisis situation, there's no question about it. Um, as far as pushing on, you know, pushing the whole business of what what the profession is structured like, how offices are structured. I think it's really important that Institute also looks at this and takes on the responsibility of actually pushing. Uh, I don't know whether it's really uh, inappropriate to consider LLPs as a good option at this point of time. I don't know whether or not it is appropriate for many of, I'm sure many of us here have sat in rooms where a design company is in discussion with a professional practice, you know, over a job. I've seen this happen. I've seen both sides of the argument. And I, I don't think this is, this is, uh, this conflict is necessary. I think it's possible to actually put in place fairly, fairly rapidly, uh, especially uh, based on what I've heard today between this, di this, this dialogue that we're talking about between the IIA on the one hand and the COA on the other hand. By the way, I have to, I have to say that what, what I heard the President say today and what the Vice President said is, you know, to me, uh, very significant. It's very positive. Um, so uh, being able to take a decision, um, 
and being able to promote formats for practice that can actually service the complexity, that can actually service the large scale sometimes of projects India is building the most at this point of time. I mean, um, you know, if, if there's any country that needs to really come to terms with how to address the future, it's us right now. Other countries can afford to be asleep, it's fine. We can't afford to be asleep. We have to wake up, we have to make things happen just right now. Um, of course, on the one hand, it's possible to go to the extent to say that, yeah, well, IIA and the COA should litigate against those people who are actually, you know, creating circumstances that make it, that make things difficult. So that's one part of the story. I'm, but that's not what I really want to focus on right now. What I want to focus on is, I think it's important for us through IIA to not abdicate our responsibility and to bring to the fore in very, very effective ways what value the profession brings to the table for the country. I mean, I don't think there are too many people out there who really, who really are in a position to appreciate the distinction between a very basic level of architectural service on the one hand and a high level of artistic, technical, procedural resolution on the other hand. And because this difference is not self-evident in, in the first instance, and nor is it explained effectively by us as a profession in the second instance, there isn't anybody there who sees the difference. So if there is one central thing that the IIA needs to do at this point of time, it is to make it abundantly clear what this distinction is, uh, what the value addition is. And by, by progression in the same argument, it becomes relatively easy to demonstrate what it takes to create that value. So, instead, of course, you know, there are other, other channels to chase, and we've been having a discussion in the, other, uh, in the earlier discussions uh, that we had at SPN and so on and so forth. But this particular one, to me, is the most important. Um, generally, Indians don't really know what we are all about. I mean, for the most part, uh, architectural students in colleges don't know what they're about. So, I mean, who really knows what we are about? It's a, it's a big question in my mind. <coughs> there are, uh, in, in terms of the position, in terms of the sort of attitude, I think IIA, more than ever before, needs to be agile on the one hand, proactive, almost preemptive, I would say, at this point of time. Um, we are in the middle of creating gigantic amounts of infrastructure, whether it's to do with education, it's to do with hospitality, it's to do with public institutions, perhaps a new parliament even, if, you know, if I'm reading it right in the press. There are so many things going on that it is outright criminal on our part uh, to, to not become dramatically more vociferous at this point of time. And the institute has to take a leading role uh, in, in doing this. So whether it is the business of leaning on government to say that, look here, procurement of uh, design services, when done in this manner, does not give you this particular value addition. Or it is to say to the institutions that, you know, uh, we are obsolete by 25 years, perhaps, and uh, there isn't any way. Uh, I speak as a professional when I say that it is uh, absolutely true that, you know, fresh graduates at this point of time, unless they are informed by self-interest, um, you know, bring to the table almost an apologetic presence because they are not entirely clear about what it is that they are supposed to be doing. What is architecture? What is their profession? You know, this is not very clear. So, um, terms of engagement, sure, this is important. Terms of engagement need to be re-looked at. But terms of engagement, and, and, and I think, uh, Vijay, you are totally right about this. The terms of engagement section, hand in hand with the whole business of defining uh, for India, uh, 
the performance standards or the methodology that we need to follow as planners and architects. I mean, what we've got written in the council document uh, is dated. Uh, is this where we need to be? Does it, does, do those documents implicitly um, <coughs> absorb the level of complexity India needs at this point of time? Uh, do, they, do they sort of make it necessary for us to demonstrate uh, design at a particular level of rigor? Do they create, uh, you know, definite standards of documentation? Do they take account of how every prof practicing professional has to work with things like the ECBC? Do they take care of what uh, architect Varma was mentioning a little bit earlier? So terms of engagement certainly needs to be looked at, and I think they need to be looked at with global reference points. There is no reason, absolutely no reason, that the Indian, ter Indian architectural terms of engagement should, be, should not unify in approach with anything in any, you know, any other terms of engagement anywhere in the world. At the same time, it has to go hand in hand with unifying also the standards of delivery that we have. We have to be seen as people who can, you know, who can deliver at a particular level. This is uh, specifically important. Not only that, uh, if, you change, if you change this uh, discourse a little bit and you know, we, look at, we look at what tools we use currently, uh, most of us are uh, working on the AutoCAD platform and that's where we are. I mean, that's our default level just at this point of time. Now, countries who are maybe uh, not doing so much of building, um, you know, it's fine. Uh, but you look at a place like Singapore, you look at a place like UK. I mean, UK is done with most of its building. They, they have declared uh, BIM to be their standard model for public projects, right? But who is it in the world who actually needs that protocol more than the Singaporeans and more than the UK? It's people like us. Because we are the ones who are doing the most of the work right now. Aspirations, as far as Indians are concerned, are sky high. I mean... Uh, what we address in the profession are absolutely cutting edge, you know, ambitions and aspirations that clients bring to the table. We've got to service those things. So our toolkit has become much more complex. It has become much more advanced, whether it is the whole business of understanding how visualization happens, how resolution happens, how this whole BIM thing happens. Making, you know, you go to, you go to Apollo Hospital for a... Um, a treatment and you have this big machine sitting there, you've got to lie down under it, right? So you know you're paying for this big machine which has flown in from somewhere, it costs probably 20 crores or something. That's why you're paying this 40,000 rupees worth of treatment for 20 minutes. You know, what about us? Where's our 3D printer? How, you know, how do we integrate our new toolkit? How do we make this particular thing visible to everybody? This too has to be reckoned. And from year one in school. So, if you, so I don't want to take too much more time. I just want to say to back it up, we'll, I think. We'll, we'll just discuss it over the. Sure, session. sure. So uh, reinforcing philosophical position as profession is tremendously important, as distinct from any other model, a business model perhaps. You know, that's, that's really, really important. And then coming out of that, these, you know, five, four or five things that I mentioned, I think it is possible for IIA just at this point of time to lean really hard on all of this because we've got the right environment. We've got seemingly a very good, uh, you know, synergy between COA and IIA, and this is the time to act. Anyhow, if we don't act, we are dead. I mean, you know, 20 years later, uh, the public infrastructure we build right now, we'll be turning around and say, look, we built such big liabilities, not big assets. Thanks. Thank you, Neeraj. <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree that uh, uh, we need to address the issue of what uh, <coughs> value we bring to the country and also the changing scenario of the tools we use, etc. Uh, I would request Amitav Roy to say a few words and then we can uh, keep it short so that we can go into discussion after that. Can we have that mic working? Thank you, Shamit. Uh, I would not prolong my 
statements very briefly a very few points i would like to touch upon in continuation with the previous panelists the thing is uh, status of profession today changing role of professional institutions on this head we are discussing i myself uh, feel very fortunate that i am from an institute which in post independence era is the first one to award degree in architecture shippur b college in 1949 it started its course and 54 our first batch graduated and 1972 this architects act came so prior to architects act many architects in india were practicing maybe also in government sector private sector they were working now since 1972 i think the first architects registrar was was formed in 1974 but since then 1975 since then it is 40 plus years where we stand today uh in terms of number of institutions architectural institutions imparting bachelors of architecture education as approved by council of architecture because the architects act mandates the quality of education as well as the registration and also the professional conduct regulations do's and don'ts since the beginning since our student days we heard that the act protects the title architect but not the profession and we are still standing there it is high time that we do something to have a radical change in this kind of approach though an act primarily is meant for protecting the interest of citizens of the country so that the citizens of the country are not cheated by fake architects but very unfortunate to note that fake architects sometimes celebrities are taking up the architect's job claiming to be an architect and also sometimes partnering with professional architects architects means i mean to say those who are registered with council of architecture may be in service may be in practice it is high time that from our fraternity we must come forward to bring in fair practice into the profession this is number 1 regarding the number of institutions why i am talking about institution education because i can being in institution being in academics full time i can recall my student days in national convention of nasa national nasa there were 30 plus institutions in 80s late 80s according to 2009 council of architecture professional documents handbook 130 institutions were there as on 2009 where we stand today 2015 430 plus institutions and as on date it has crossed certainly beyond gone beyond 450 approaching 500 number of architects registered with council of architecture a few weeks back it was just below 50000 but nowadays the flood gate has opened nowadays the annual intake in all the institutions it is way way beyond 20000 it's nearly 25000 plus so in coming one two years we will be flooded with architects i don't know in this present scenario of undercut and working with below dignity kind of coating fees i don't know what is 
where we are heading to what is our fate as a teacher for the past few years i have been teaching as one of the subjects professional practice and that's in the final year pre thesis year the students nowadays are well connected previously it was a kind of island situation fair practice or malpractice whosoever doing wherever went unnoticed in many cases nowadays they are well aware and they are connected some students in that fourth year they asked me sir you are talking about all these things but these are all very fair way of looking at the profession but the reality is something different my job is going to be hijacked by my senior or even my classmate what to do sir so i used to tell them that educational institution is the place to teach you fair practice malpractice you will come to know in the profession i cannot be a party to your learning malpractice <laughs> now time has come really the time has come the entire fraternity why i am saying entire fraternity i am also a part of fraternity council of architecture is a statutory body whereas iia is the professional body council of architecture can give the title can ensure fake fake persons fake architects fake professionals to take up architects job uh council of architecture can can do something but from our fraternity it is our responsibility at iia level to ensure dignity to ensure a dignified presence in the profession this is number 1 and towards the cause of visibility and a fair visibility whatever we need to do that is not only through exhibition campaign propaganda but also also since education is the field education is the area from where the tomorrow's professionals are coming up we need to put a check on this rampant mushrooming of educational institutions iia has got a big role to play i i suppose it it is my belief that the professionals in the fraternity they don't want any dilution of this profession they don't want any substandard institution to run and produce substandard graduates who by default because as the council has approved so far the institution the graduates are bound to get the bound to get the registration and they if they are not properly qualified they will dilute the entire profession in in many countries i have got an experience a very brief experience about architecture as education it is one of the most sought after subject but after passing out it is not a life uh, full of luxury and comfort it is not a bed of roses it's a life of struggle but still accomplishment and satisfaction these are part of an architect's life and i suppose that with this in mind uh, and with a mission for dignified presence in the market in the profession and the society uh, council of architecture and iia will work hand in hand and with a synergy for the future generation to come thank you so much thank you amitav uh, i'd request uh, architect uh, naik to share a few words and then we can open the discussion it is a really interesting and inspiring too because in the right side uh, mr neeraj ji and mr verma ji they had already spoken about the academic the speech was mostly academic oriented he also is very interestingly he told that instead of uh, 
demanding service from the people, rather we should demonstrate and that would really prove our strength before the public. And the other side, I think the matter which I had briefed, that, that has been blown up and uh, elaborated by both of uh, Vice President and Mr. Amitabh, they very nicely they have elaborated the thing. Perhaps the same thing I had just briefed in a short while in my, in my short speech, so I was really delighted to listen from them. And at the same time, I say, it is all that problem that is coming up with the demand and supply, the, both the things, you know. We need certain, to the certain extent, we need the demand of architects to certain extent, which is not happening. The supply and demand, there is a disproportionate scale. And for that reason, perhaps we are going to face a tremendous, the gigantic uh, situation, like a problem that we are going to face in future. So, how to avoid it? See, it is just like the growth of population and the growth and change. The, both are synonyms. When there is a growth, there is a change. So, like that, the urbanization is a common phenomenon and it is a really increasing in a very prodigious rate. And now the situation has come that we must also change our mind. Architects, those who are working in the urban areas, they are not interested to go to the rural areas because they know they are not going to be professionally to be remunerative the way they expect. So, rural people cannot meet their expectation. But still we forget that there is a lot of scope in the rural areas. I had a discussion with the secretary, he was telling I was demanding for two chief acted posts in the government. Why you are demanding there is one chief acted, why are you demanding two chief acted? <coughs> I told the same thing, there is a change, so there is a growth in population, there is a growth in demand. And so, you know, how, how do you uh, say that we need to architect? I say, sir, in the government only we can do some service to the rural areas. In the private sector it is difficult because it is actually the people cannot rural, in a rural area cannot afford to pay to the architects if they want to serve them there. It is only by the public body, like the government can do that. We have to increase the number of architects, those who can serve in the rural areas, they can do some research kind of work. They will see the local available resources, they have to see the local technologies to be adopted in constructing houses so that the rural people can be privileged. They can get their house with their affordable, affordable price. That is very important. So gradually we will prove. It is not that what we said, that we have to prove before the people that we can make houses as per their requirement, as per their need. When we prove that we can make cost-effective houses, then people would think that the architect's role is very important. And apart from that, through, I think, some, through some mechanism, we have to prove our role of architects, how the role of architects is very much essential for the service of the people. How we are going to save? Save in cost of buildings, and save also in other way. Other way means, for example, I can say, one friend once asked like this, your architects are designing buildings which are very costly or you are taking too much charge also. Your uh, services that you are rendering, for that you are charging high. I told, see, you are going to purchase a SAT. You are purchasing Vanusian sat, you are paying 3000 rupees and you are purchasing a sat with Peter England and that you are paying 600 rupees. So why do, why do you still then purchase that Vanusian sat? Why do you, then it is not come in the market. There must be some difference, difference in quality and in long term return. The sat which you purchase from Vanusian that will go for three years with no change of color, no, nothing, and quality also. But if you see the other side, if you wear one month, the whole color fading would be there and we will throw that side. 
And if you continuously see in the term of that six sats you purchase, it will be more costlier than the sat that you purchase with 3,000 rupees. So in the longer term, the sustainability matter is there. The building should be sustainable. The running expenditure, the return, the, beaut the building looks beautiful, it has some return in the other way. The rental value goes high. Some other aspect, there are so many other aspects, in the services you said, the maintenance and other things. So that you have to prove. Then only once you prove that, then people would realize, you know, whatever cost it may be, we must approach to an architect rather than going to a layman for a, the service. <coughs> so that is very important. And that time has come. I think we have to prove. And we have to go to the, like the way when the population is growing at one place and if you think that when the other facilities are there in the urban areas, that is why you don't want to go to the other areas. So we have to go for decentralization. Development should be decentralized. How it would happen? Creating awareness through seminars, international seminars. When, see, one thing, recently there was a sustainable uh, development and there was some uh, smart city mission seminars was made by this, I think, Northern chapter last time I had come. I was really delighted to see this event to happen. I went back to my state, I talked to many. I thought that when Bhubaneswar is a smart city, number one, then we must have such kind of seminars there. We must show that there is a great role of architects in devising a city with a smart city concept. But not, I don't think after that, for us I have not seen many seminars like that. But I am also trying to make a very grand seminar like that to just to display before the government that the role of architects are really something different. The way you are asking engineers, you are asking planners, where the role of planners, you know what is happening in the present scenario, how the cities are now degrading, how the planners are taking the role of architects and that is why in most cases you see the cities are losing its uh, own originality and in terms of infrastructure, in terms of many aspects, you see. I was talking to, in one of the seminars there in Odisha, that uh, in a particular area, whole buildings, I think the thousands of buildings have come up that has been approved by our this planning authority and all the buildings because water logged in the rainy season. I mean, water goes up to the first floor. That is the scenario. People go by boat, no? And people have started leaving that place and whole buildings now lying vacant. You see the damage of the public fund. It is due to just silly mistakes. Because those who are in the helm of affairs regulating the building development, perhaps they are not aware of the development policies, what kind of policies to be have to be framed or what kind of uh, regulations, building regulations are to be made. But that is there, regulations are there. But there are many technical aspects which are lacking in those regulations and which are not understood by those professionals, those who are not architects. So time has come that we have to prove, we have to organize such kind of seminars and we create that awareness among the people regarding the role of architects. This is one side, other side that educational part, academic oriented and whatever Niraj was, uh, was telling, Varmaji was also highlighting. So I was really enlightened by their speech. So those things are also equally required. I think… Uh, Council… Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I think one of the yeah. underlying factors that uh, comes to light uh, what Neeraj <coughs> said and what you have also reiterated the good uh, the importance of value of good design in the profession uh, be it uh, aesthetic be it uh, professional quality of work be it in education the quality of education those are uh, i think the underlying factors which all the panelists uh, have said mr verma uh, shamit uh, you had mentioned a very important point in the beginning that was the gaps. I think the time has come 
I know today we may not be having time because we are already running very late. But this general agreement of trade in services that the World Trade Organization is going to be very important, especially for the profession of architecture. You have seen so many architects from outside India who have already established the, their practices in this country. For that purpose, what we need to do is discipline. Why am I mentioning this? Because we are talking in terms of role of professional bodies. That we need to discipline our profession up to the best, have such kind of stipulations that our architects are also up to the mark when Neeraj talks about the quality or the value added services or the result which we get after an architect has played his part the way he is required to do is very important. Otherwise, the professional institutes will be failing in their role if today they cannot create awareness amongst the people, the politicians and the authorities. This is very important, creating awareness amongst profession we have been trying to do. Through these seminars every year we have awards which we display in front of an audience which again are the architects. I think what we need to do is display the achievements of our brothers in the profession amongst the public, amongst the authorities and tell them that look if there was not an architect involved in this project what would have been its situation and what Mr. Nayak just now mentioned if there is a problem in the development which has been done in the areas which were in the areas where the floods are going to come, we need to publicize that. What we are trying to do, we are trying to keep quiet. We, we, are, we are maybe too busy in trying to get work for us. It is not, this is uh, what is required. It is that we have to speak. We cannot keep on taking a situation that the architects are not heard. What I want to say through this professional bodies, we have to make sure we speak and we speak as loudly as possible by not in terms of loud voice, but in terms of our, our services which we render to them. The time has come when this, uh, this country needs what was just now mentioned the rural development also. The time has come, the government has to look for our services and it is not that we have to go to the government and tell them that we, why we are not being asked to participate, whether it is the smart cities concept or whether it is the infrastructure, what we need to do. I think Thank you very much. We have been uh, too much involved within our own selves and not having been gone to the public. That is something that uh, we need to do. Uh, we can have some interactions from the audience. Anybody would like to? Uh, Architect Rohit Jain. Please introduce yourself so that. Uh, I'm Architect Rohit Jain. I had an observation. We've all been talking about uh, the sheer high number of architects that are going to graduate, as uh, Architect Amitava has said. So, what if our professional institutes create? a document that would be the wants of the profession and then we educate the students who are graduating because in the next 15 years these people, these students will become some kind of decision makers within the profession. So just imagine if we can have a kind of a agenda which we use our council to push to the institutes and say within the next 15 years we may have some, some decision makers doing what our profession actually wants. So the question to everybody is, I have two questions. One is, what is the message that we want to see in the next 15 years? And the second question is, how do we ask our 
institutes what are the modes with which we can ask the institutes to actually propagate this message who would like to take it one thing is a very interesting uh, question you have asked i say that uh, those architects who were coming up just boarding architects immediately after uh, their degree most of them instead of working under some experienced architects they have now started also their own consultancy firm thinking that they would get lot of projects through manipulation so this is the mal practices that is happening how they are getting projects we know in all the development authorities actually these the architects are able to get projects but senior architects are sitting at because they are not able to go and make compromise with the authority in the very true fact no no this is a fact that is happening what we can do so these architects those who are inexperienced they are killing your market they get the project they don't do the project properly then it creates a bad impression in the mind of the public they say what architects i had given a project to such a guy who is very much found very close to many people in the government authority very known they are telling he is a very good architect because who tells them good architect those who are not architects and they say that they are telling good but what kind of services is rendering is doesn't know abc that rather than that engineer would have done better job than this so this scenario is taking place and it would be dangerous how to stop it see and we are again telling that architect should be given 5% fees and there is no merit also we cannot say that 5% fees should be given to all the architects of different quality you know so the architect with experience like 3 years 4 years experience he cannot claim 5% then people would go to a senior architect and they would pay 5% and get the job so there should be a variation in the fees according to the experience i feel if some new 2 3 years here they should do some small kind of projects their project you should be restricted to certain kind of projects with a smaller size and the fees should be also regulated <coughs> at par with their experience the more you grow and with the experience i think the fees should also grow and people would accept it if you prove that you are deserving architect to be paid for that fees then people would pay you. and, and if you don't uh, qualify for that naturally people would never pay for you i think various yeah. methodologies need to be worked yeah, out uh, maybe regulation or not regulation is the age where most of is getting deregulated so some mechanism is required but uh, yeah. let us see how it can be uh, can we have somebody want to yeah. ask good evening and uh, first of all i would like to i am could you introduce uh, yourself yeah i am architect dp singh and i am from noida and uh, first of all i would like to thank the organizing committee who has given us this chance to be the, the participant in the question and session uh, i am taking words from mr neeraj manchanda that many of us even the society and the professionals that uh, we don't know that what we are all about right now uh, from this we all agree if i take uh, notes from all the speakers that uh, awareness is the problem about the profession that we are not able to tackle coming back to you mr manchanda uh, from this i feel that we are a big lot 125 crores of people uh we are a uninformed lot means with this uninformation uninformed lot we create uh, uninformed perceptions now if we say that the society in general is like uninformed and our perceptions are there so definitely these perceptions do take do matter when we take decision when we are into the regulatory bodies or maybe in the professional bodies now uh, 
when we take decisions for example uh, reducing the seats increasing the colleges decreasing the colleges uh, maybe uh, about the fee also that what should be the kind of fee are these decisions is there anything research behind that while taking these decisions and i see that this 3 years of span in council of architecture is too less actually by the time you are able to understand and find the research solutions your term is over so uh, can you throw some light on that that if we take any decisions whether in the professional body or the regulatory body what should be the research agenda behind that as the various professional bodies at the global level maybe the american institute of architects or the reba take that they have all everything in place before taking any decision rather than on the basis of perceptions i will take a example from uh, uh, president sir could you be uh, a bit brief so yeah i would like sir uh, sir uh, if you are talking about seminars that awareness so can't these institutions all over india be your strength at council of architecture that we can go for awareness campaign through these institution that it becomes mandatory for every institution in the country that at least they have one awareness seminar at least in a semester so these kinds of things this is idea it's i'm not recommending anything so coming back to can you uh, because you have talked about the formats for practice in architecture so these formats need to be developed can you throw some light on what uh, uh, about these formats in practice of architecture right. thank you then i'll just make two very brief points one is that uh, <coughs> people who graduate from school all of us graduated from school um a, a person who's out of high school into architecture school is or architecture college is <coughs> you know i mean you have capacities you know you come out of an indian board exam system you can sort of process a lot of things at the same time i think um, what's very important is that the minute you land in college um, you know we could have systems in place which um, make our students very aware about you know why we are here in this college and what we are going to be doing i think it gives you your sense of identity first thing you know that i think that's really important but that's one small part of uh, the answer that i want to make to you the other thing is that yes um you look anywhere um you we we find very advanced or relatively more advanced uh statements uh and expositions and expressions about what is a level of service what is a level of delivery what is uh, a, a sort of a gradation of you know project types different countries have different protocols um the one that we learned from actually uh, is uh, <laughs> the new zealand construction industry standards the new zealand construction industry must have decided that you know well nobody else is doing this let us do this the architects are not doing this other uh, so when when we read that this is actually a bunch of i think about eight or nine offices we found that hey it's not that difficult you know it's possible to electively work this uh it's electively possible to sort of rework one's own understanding and it's it's not it's not a gigantically different thing but it's structured and you know it 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 makes it very clear uh where it is that you want to head so the first point i think is a is a more philosophical point you know making it possible for each architectural student uh you know she or he is able to understand why she is or why he is here in architecture school it's a societal responsibility it's nothing less than that uh, you are after all spending someone else's money uh in in many instances when one works on public infrastructure it's public money so it's a it's a big deal so that i think is the more philosophical point as far as performance standards are concerned or the terms of agreement are concerned i think there are enough models if we are the country that is actually putting out the most amount of construction anywhere in the world just at this point of time then there is no reason that we should not have a a more advanced or at least a review of where we stand currently at this point of time and see where we want to go with this thing it's like
If would you be a bit brief? Uh, yeah. I've been getting messages that we have a deadline for dinner. We already at almost 10 o'clock. Yeah. So, uh, what you told that uh, regarding the permit that we should make for uh, this kind of controlling, the regulating the system is a bit uh, tough job. It is not an easy job. Uh, it is all we have to work on heat and trial method also sometimes. If there is no mathematical model that we can frame, that we can derive certain solution. And architecture is a very creative thing. So there is nothing like there is in any formula like that we can derive the solution. So what I say, hmm, let us uh, find out that mechanism, how to do that. How to find out that system, find out a system where we can see the regulating the fees, how to regulate the fees. I cannot say, sometimes I was just telling that even in a two years experience, we cannot say also sometimes that fees would be like this. So it depends on your competency. Sometimes in two years experience also somebody can make a very high quality buildings and people can appreciate and you can also charge high fees. That depends on your competency level. So, judging that competency level, I think the best judge is the people. People is to judge and you have to show your, that competency by yourself. Thank so you very cannot <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, yeah. we're getting very okay. bad looks from Anuj, who is in charge of the video. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, I was, just, I was just waiting for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> As the debate was heating up, Anuj was messaging me every two minutes. No, because I am aware of the restrictions of this place and I am sure everybody has got a long way to go. <coughs> and uh, we do have a time limit here, but that notwithstanding, we will do that. Uh, we would like to invite uh, all the participants of this panel discussion who have contributed to an extremely lively discussion. And I hope the discussion will carry over. Uh, drinks and dinner and of course the future course is being charted out by our esteemed guests here we wish them all the best uh, I would li now like to invite uh, one by one uh, uh, architect Abhijit Ray to give a memento to architect uh, Bishwaranjan Nayak, President Council of Architecture may I request you sir Thank you, sir. May I request architect Amit Babbar to kindly present the memento to our architect Vijay Garg, Vice President, Council of Architecture. <laughs> May I request architect Puneet Sethi to kindly present a memento to architect Balbir Verma. This, this was not a, a mix-up, but the next person whom I am going to invite, like I did a mix-up in the first uh, presentation, Architect Vinita, Vinita Verma to present a uh, memento to Architect Amitabh Roy, please. Thank you, ma'am. I request uh, Professor D.P. Singh to kindly present a memento to architect Neeraj Manchanda. <laughs> May I request 
architect Nikhil Mohan Mishra to kindly present a memento to the moderator of this session, architect Shamit Majanda. Thank you. I now hand over the mic to architect Amit Babbar for the vote of thanks. Thanks, uh, Anuj. I've been asked to be very brief, so I will be very brief. Um, firstly, I would like to thank our chief guests, um, architect Biswaran Janayak and architect Vijay Garg for, uh, and uh, Mr. Amitav Roy for, for coming here and gracing this uh, occasion. Thank you to all the office bearers of the Northern Chapter, uh, Shamit, Paliwal Sahib, Rohit Ji, uh, Professor Mathur. Special thank you to uh, architect Balbir Verma and Professor Chetan Vedya for your support, sir. Um, Professor Neeraj Manchanda, thank you for being here. Um, special thank you to our uh, uh, chapter chairman from Haryana, uh, architect Puneet Sethi, uh, architect Satish Singla, office bearers of the Haryana chapter. Um, thank you to our sponsors, Flowguard, Ashton International. Without you, this would not have been possible. Um, thanks, Anuj, for organizing this uh, with your usual military precision. And last and last, uh, not the least, uh, thank you especially to our very, very senior members and all of you for coming here. Um, dinner is served, in fact, for quite some time now. Dinner is here on this floor and the cocktails are on the floor above. So please uh, join us for drinks and dinner. Thank you.